Hey guys! So uh, today's video is going to be one of my trademark rambles, but before I crack on with that, I would like to ask for your assistance with something. It has been so long since I last did a run of question and answer videos. Um, it, it feels like over a year, so I would like to bring back a run of those. So um, please, if you guys have any questions you would like to ask me, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below just of this video. And um, I'm going to aim to do a question per video or maybe, you know, like a couple of maybe linked questions per videos and then maybe a video with just some miscellaneous small questions at the end or something to that effect. I'm going to aim to answer all of them, but I might use some artistic creativity in uh, in selection because, you know, if, they, if I can't give a, a decent answer to something or... Um, if I can't give an answer without giving away personal information, then, for example, it might just be better for me to bypass the question rather than to force a video out. But you guys get the idea. Um, it can be about tech. It can be about other stuff if you want. I'm assuming most will sort of gravitate around tech. Um, I'm not too much of a coder. I know that a lot of you guys throw me some coding questions from time to time, but I only do it in a very limited capacity and certainly only for fun and... I really only work on my own projects, so my like commenting is really bad and my habits can get quite bad as well because I'm more self-taught. So um yeah, like I mean feel free to, to, to ask any questions and uh um because you know um because, because you don't know what I know. <laughs> so yeah, basically ask your question, but yeah, if I don't uh, if I don't answer it then uh, it'll be because I don't have anything interesting to say about it. So anyway, Today I have been thinking for quite some time actually about a, a significant difference between what I feel uh, lies between Linux based operating systems and Windows based operating systems and a little bit about Linux users and Windows users, although I really don't want to make this about people and I don't want to make generalizations about Linux users and Windows users. However, I do feel that there is a distinction there. Uh, and, and, um, and it might not necessarily be a huge distinction and it might, and it, you know, not like a black and white one. But because Windows is considered the default operating system, the majority of people on Linux have affirmatively pulled themselves away from Windows and used Linux because that's a difficult thing to do. You've got, in a lot of cases, if you make the cold turkey transition, you're using a whole suite of new software tools. Whereas if you were to, you know, there, there are gradual ways of doing it. You replace your browser with an open source. You replace all your, your software with open source Linux available stuff uh, on Windows, and then you do the operating system as the last final leap. That would be like, I'd imagine the smoothest way. But with me, I just jumped straight into it, and it was difficult. But uh, I was at university at the time. And there is no better place to learn a new skill than at university. I was actually studying international politics, but why why not brush up on my computing anyway? So um so yeah, like um I really did um put a lot of time into learning Linux and, and Linux has now since became my default operating system to the point where I struggle to use Windows, or at least I don't feel confident in using Windows. I think probably if I were to sit down in front of a machine, I'd get to grips with it within within a couple of minutes. But it's it's that feeling of, you know, that I've not really had Windows as a primary operating system for well over 10 years now. And even when I have had it as an operating system uh, for, a per for a period of only a couple of years, really, it's been to play games. It has only been to play games. I've not slipped or anything like that and, and, and ended up moving all my workflow onto Windows. I'm just no interest. I have no interest in, in, in Windows whatsoever. I think the thing that I'm trying to get at is that Linux users don't put how easy something is to use at the front of their list of priorities, or rather at the top of their list of priorities. And a lot of Windows users will consider that to be their top and often only priority short of getting the job done. And there have been times when I've introduced Win uh, Linux to just regular people, and they've almost looked at me with a sense of derision because why would they use something that's more difficult? Maybe for the same reason that people drive manual transmissions over automatic, or at least, of course, in the cases when they do. Yes, it's more difficult, but they have more control. And, well, you know, there are a few perks like they can save fuel. And that's very similar with Linux. Yes, you can, you know, save a bit of computing power by loading on a lightweight desktop environment. But, again, not quite as intuitive as just going around the shop and buying a faster computer. <laughs> um, so, um, so I think that... When we look at what is best, I think uh, I think that after jumping ship 
from a operating system that the overwhelming majority of people use and forcing yourself to learn something new knowledge might not seem as intimidating perhaps or at least you know the knowledge that that we're talking about here and i don't really know you know how to bridge that gap how to bridge that connection um you know how to make linux accessible or whether or not linux is destined to be the manual transmission of computer operating systems and for that maybe it can serve a very good purpose uh it reminds me of a social network actually that i've recently jo joined up to called ulipo a lipo social and it is what's called a i believe it's called a lipogram instance and what that effectively means is that it's an instance of mastodon which is a social network for those of you that don't know and it works very much like Twitter. However, you are forbidden, or each user is forbidden from using the letter E, which means you have to craft every status without the most common letter in the English alphabet. You can't even say the words English alphabet. <laughs> and um, I've signed up to it. And I, what actually made me sign up to it was because I could get, because I came up with the handle Chris Was, uh, because that didn't have an E. And uh, I was so pleased with myself, I actually ended up creating an account on it. And I crafted a couple of statuses, and it took me quite a long time. And in fact, it felt like my brain was doing a bit of a mental workout. And then it sort of hit me in that moment. Why am I doing this? Why am I deciding to actually write uh, anything, uh, but electing for it to be more difficult, arbitrarily more difficult? And it's like the difficulty is the reason. It's like, I think it was, isn't it that famous Kennedy speech about, um, about the space race? We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That's why it was so much fun to even just craft a status uh, without having to use the letter E, because you have to think so much about it. And the side effects of the social network are rather amusing as well. You'll never see a spelling error because every time you craft a status, there will inevitably be a letter E that slips in there. You'll type the word the. Just You'll just like never even think about it. You'll type the word the in, the letter E will just slip in. So you'll never, like a status will never just get get approved straight off. The You know, your human mind will make a mistake. So you will spell check every word instinctively in your status. It will be very rare that you'll actually make a misspelling because you will be so vigilant about, you know, having to leave out the letter E. But also because it's more difficult to write a status at all, you don't just write one off the top of your head. You don't just let any absent thought just work its way out into, you know, the public domain. No, no. If each status takes maybe, I don't know, it took me about five to ten minutes just to make a single status. Um, it was it was a great deal of fun, but you have to restructure whole sentence. You can't just drop in and out a word. It's not like you can just crack open a thesaurus. You need to structure sentences. And, you know, the rules are that you have to use proper words. You can't just, you know, use an asterisk for a letter, the, the, a letter E or anything like that. You have to, you know, go within the spirit of the game, as it were. But, yeah, you know, it forces people to think about what they're saying. It's It forces people to make sure that they say it in a high-quality way. Um, and it is. It's very interesting. Of course, it's whims whimsical and a little bit of a nonsense game in that regard. But... Um, you know, it's it's a good way to learn a few new words. It's a good way to uh, practice at restructuring sentences. And it's that hurdle that you jump over, you know, that, that just sort of... The, the hurdle is the point, isn't it? It's... Uh... So uh, so that kind of got me thinking, and in a lot of cases, Linux might be more difficult by design because it it gives you more options as a result of it. But like I say, I don't want this to, to, to in any way sort of um, be a commentary on, on elitism because I think that that's something entirely different now. I'm sort of really just talking more about, you know, a user experience with the software and the the um, just the overall end user experience. But uh, anyway, that's just a few rambling thoughts from me. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below um, because there's probably... Uh, Probably quite a lot to talk about there, but yeah, it's another rambly video. Um, I will catch you guys later. Thank you very much for joining me. And I'll pop the link to the Aleppo social account down in the description below just to see if, uh, how far I, uh, I take not, um, 
not using the letter E over there. So anyway, thanks very much for joining me. Um, and until next time, I have been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now. Hey guys, this is just the end screen, so I'm going to promote some things. Uh, feel free to follow me on Mastodon uh, if you want to talk Linux with me. I'm on linuxrocks.online, in my opinion, the best Mastodon server. Also, I'm developing a NeoCities website which lists uh, my favorite applications and websites. So I'll put a link to that in the description as well, and I'm going to be updating that uh, on an ongoing basis. So if you want to see various apps and websites that I recommend, uh, yeah, link in the description. And for those of you that would like to see me in a slightly less technical capacity, I've got another channel where I play games with a few friends of mine called Project Chronicle. I will, of course, link that in the description below. Toodaloo.